Well, greetings one and all, and welcome back to another video with your host, Andrew. I was hoping to get out again today to do a video, but actually I'm doing this at 7.30 in the morning, um, just because I'm, I'm actually meeting some friends later today. So this video may go out at some stage today, or more than likely it's gonna be on Monday uh, when you see this. And it's just that I've got an incredibly busy weekend and I've actually been really busy with doing some artwork of late. If you're curious to see what I've been up to, do check out my Instagram. I've got a number of different artworks which have been um, published recently and some which are for sale. Anyway, what we're gonna be having a look at today is a new pen from Narwhal and that's the Narwhal Key West range. And this one is the Isla Morada. So without further ado, let's get on with this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so Narwhal. Narwhal's been around now for a couple of years and this year they've done something a little bit different. Now, if you've been following Narwhal's history, they've been predominantly doing piston-filled fountain pens in a range of semi-demonstrator style pens as well as some opaque models as well. However, this year what they've decided to do is actually do something a little bit different and we've now actually got ourselves a cartridge converter so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the outer box off and then inside you're presented with a leatherette pouch and inside the leatherette pouch we have got our pen. So let's just take that out of the plastic sleeve and here we go, we have got the Isla Morada, Isla Morada uh, from the Narwhal Key Rest range. And this is a very attractive pen. So what we're gonna to do today, as per usual, I'm gonna give you the dimensions of this pen right now. Wonderful. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to give you an overview, then a writing sample, a size comparison, and my final thoughts and feelings. So the Narwhal Key West Island Marauder. What we have got now is a cigar shaped pen and this very, very sparkly material. And as I turn this, you can see just how sparkly this is. I definitely feel they've gone after sort of sailor's approach of getting that real sparkle going on on a pen. And this really comes alive, really. It really does come alive in certain lights. Now this morning is a little bit dull, but hopefully you can see from as I turn this, just how sparkly this gold is. It comes in two varieties of colors and they've just released a, a new color as a limited edition, um, which is a purple one. And the other one in the standard range is a blue. This one comes with a like a multitude of different sparkles in the pen. We've got like red screens, a little bit of blue in there as well, golds and it's just a very happy looking pen, a very happy pen indeed. So let's start from the top, work our way down. So cigar style top, very nice uh, functional clip. It does fit into a shirt pocket or a boob pocket as my friend May likes to refer to it as. And yeah, very, very practical. We've got a lovely uh, Greek key pattern going around on the center band, very, very nice. And then we've got a, a very long slender barrel, which comes down to a nice point here. But yeah, just have a look at that material. <laughs> it's not a pen which I would ever think I would actually buy. I, I've never thought I'd be into sparkly pens, but for some reason, I just find this pen really happy to look at. Underneath the barrel, we have got some metal threads, which are really smooth. And as you can hear, as I undo it, really nice and uh, really nicely machined it is done onto plastic threads um, so i can't guarantee how well this will stand up over time but considering what you actually pay for the pen i think you know it's, it's not going to be something which people are going to be too disappointed with if it lasts say 10 years plus very nice comfortable section it's quite slender on the smaller size uh, this definitely isn't something which um larger hand people would probably get on well with. They might find them holding their grip a little bit further back, in which case your fingers will be resting on the actual threads. We've got a stainless steel nib. This one is a fine, comes in a lovely gold with the, the narwhal imprinted on the actual 
nib itself, plastic feet, which is coated with uh, gold powder at the moment, because why? Well, I've got a, a nice ink in here, so stay tuned for the writing sample to find out. Underneath the barrel, we've got a standard cartridge converter, which just pops in. I won't actually demonstrate how to work it, but I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Just give it a little bit of shake, and you see the gold just getting activated in there as well. Very beautiful indeed. Okay, so that's the pen as an overview. I'm just going to give you one last twirl of the pen, just so you can see it in all its beauty. Wonderful. Okay, and then what we're going to do is go on to doing a writing sample. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what we're going to do is I'm going to provide you a writing sample and I'm going to just abbreviate it down to Norwell Key West because the item order is just a specific name for the colour of this pen and that's in the description of the title anyway. So what we have is the Norwell Key West. We've got a fine steel nib. And I believe it's an in house made nib. Okay, the ink we've got today is a new ink. And this is Pelican. Yeah, I think you all can guess what this is now. Pelican Golden Barrel. I believe that's how you spell it. Okay, going to write out the quick brown fox next. And there we go, we've got a mixture of cursive and print. So it's really nice to sync. It doesn't show it off in the best quality on this Rodier paper. And also this morning light isn't fantastic, but trust me when I say that, and if you actually go and check out my Instagram, hopefully by the time I post this video, I may have completed my most recent piece of artwork, which is a Phoenix. And you can just really see how this ink comes to life on certain papers. So. Let's see how juicy this nib is. Not too bad for a fine, uh, not too bad at all. Let's just do a couple of passes. Yep, pretty good. Now is there any line variation? So let's just move this up a little bit. I mean, if you really push, there's a little bit of expression. Uh, what you tend to find is you just get a, a juicier line, just as sort of demonstrated here. It's very nice, though, I have to say. Very, very nice indeed. But, um, I mean, obviously, you're not going to get this as a flex writer, and it is pretty rigid, to be honest. So don't buy this pen expecting there to be really any line variation. Okay, let's just post it a second. Um, let's... Do some reverse writing. No, not really. I mean, you get the faintest of lines coming through, and it could just be with this ink. But yeah, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't 
really try to use this and it just runs dry, which is a bit of a shame. Go back onto the other side and there we go. Very nice indeed. Okay, so that's the, the writing. Um, let's move on to doing a size comparison and then my final thoughts. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what we have here is a few different pens, all following that sort of orange and gold feel. And let's start from the left. So we've got the Noel Key West Isla Morada, and then we've got a Santini Italia, and that one is in the amber. Then we've got a Pelican M200 in the gold swirls. And then last but not least, we've got the Origin uh, from Nino Marino's Mayora, and that is the Mytho model. So it's a very slender pen. It's much longer than that of the M200. It's a lot slender than the Santini. But if you've got um, smaller hands, then definitely this is a pen which you may want to consider from a size comparison. Well, let's just get these uncapped next, and then we'll see what they're like uncapped. Now I find this pen extremely comfortable to use, and I have no problems writing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. And as you can see, the Santini and the the Key West model, stay. <laughs> okay. Good pen. Right, I do need to get myself a pen tray. There we go. So the Santini and the Mayora are fairly similar in size uh, with the or having a slightly thicker section. The M200 and the, the Narwhal aren't actually too dissimilar uncapped. Uh, there's maybe about, I'd say, two or three millimeters difference in terms of length on the Key West, but generally speaking, there's not a huge amount of difference there. Right, so let's now move on to doing my final thoughts and feelings. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so what do I like, dislike, and who's the pen for, and who's it not for? Okay, so what I really specifically love about this pen is a few things. I love the fact that it comes with a pen pouch. There's very little in terms of um, presentation in here, nothing whatsoever other than the fact that we get this nice little pen pouch, and that, that's fantastic. You know, I, I think that's, I love that minimal style packaging. I think certainly for this sort of price range, you're getting quite a lot of bang for your buck. You're getting a nice cardboard box, leatherette pouch, and I don't think you can go wrong with that, to be honest. Really, really nice. I love the material on here. Now, it's not going to be for everyone, um, but I love how this pen just reacts in the light. And I had hoped to go to the beach today to present this pen, but what with the weather being what it is, and also I'm meeting some friends from London later, I decided against um, venturing out today. But at some stage, I may do a comparison video at the beach um, with this pen. We'll have to see. What I specifically love is the practicality of this pen. So it can post and it posts. Oop. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna leave that in, I think. It does post quite securely. <laughs> Oh, the irony of saying it post securely and dropping the pen lid. Okay, so the pen does actually post quite securely. I just didn't put it on actually securely. Um, I guess actually this is the, there's a, a pro and a con to this. Uh, whilst it doesn't have metal threads on the inside, which would make the actual longevity of this um, pen better, it does mean that you can actually post it without actually scratching the material. So let's just try that again. There we go. So it does post, and in the hand, it doesn't become too back-weighted, although I do find that my grip does go a little bit further up on the pen. <laughs> Sorry about that. And it's very nicely put together, so there's no squeaks, no... I mean, look at that. That is so smooth. And that's metal on metal. Now, on the last few metal pens which I've had, I've had a, a, a number of times where there's been possibly like a little, I guess, a dink. I don't know what the technical name would be. 
um, which has basically stopped the pen from actually screwing back on. I love also the fact that, oh, I love that golden barrel. I love the fact that we also got a little cartridge converter in here as well. It does make for a much easier cleaning. And to be honest, you get a similar-ish sort of uh, feel out of the pen as well. So I'm really, really impressed by that. And I hope that Narwhal in the future do consider doing some other pens with cartridge converters because to be honest, as much as I love pistons, unless you've got a nib unit which can quite easily unscrew, they can be a bit of a pain to actually maintain. Anyway, very practical, it pastes, um, and it also goes into a shirt pocket with no problems whatsoever. And it's a pretty secure fit. I mean, it's got a little bit of tension in there, as we can see, very nice. And it's just a very happy pen. Very, very happy indeed. Is there anything I don't like about the pen? Well, I mean, the cigar shape is going to be something like hit or miss, I think. And I'm going to be able to wrap up who this, what I don't like and who's it not for, I think, in this uh, same section. So I love the cigar shape. Um, however, it's not a shape which everybody enjoys. And it'd be nice to see like a, um, this sort of material maybe on a, a flat top or a conical top pen. I think that would be uh, very, very nice indeed. And maybe also quite in keeping with this sort of Greek and Italian style design. Anyway, very, very nice. The pen is a bit small though. Um, I get on perfectly okay with this. And with my grip, I've done quite extensive letter writing with this pen. I've also done some artwork with a pen and I have no problems with it whatsoever. So that's not a problem for me. However, I do appreciate that there are going to people, be people out there which have got much larger hands than I have and they will find this a struggle to get on with, I think, because it's just on the slight slender side. So it could be a pro, it could be a con, just dependent on yourself. And that's, that's all really. Um, one last thing I would uh, maybe suggest in the future Narwhal, if you're listening, do consider making larger versions of much larger hands. So just like some of the Italian companies out there, like some of the Chinese uh, and Japanese companies, you know, Sailor, they do like a Pro Gear Slim, Pro Gear Regular and King of Pen and a large. So they've got four different sizes depending on your size hand and they all come obviously in different uh, finishes. Um, Iboya do three different sizes, a small, medium and a large. So I would love to see that on a narwhal in the future. Having a introductory range of larger pens would be absolutely superb. But narwhal seems to have been a brand which I have unawaringly started collecting, I guess, because I've now got three pens from them. And I love all three of them. I, th I think they are at such a collectible price point. And when we actually, when we look into that sort of uh, market segments, there isn't a huge amount of interesting materials at this sort of price, with the exceptions of um, maybe Conklin, uh, which do some quite nice materials. But I'd say, you know, for what you get, in-house made nib, fantastic material, cartridge converter, practical, you're not going to go wrong with this. And if you put in Pen Friends UK 10 at checkout uh, at Colt Pens, you will get yourself 10% off this pen, which will take you down, I think about five pounds, if memory serves, with um, free delivery in the UK. So yes, definitely consider getting this pen. Uh, you're not going to be disappointed. It comes, as I say, in two different colors. You've got the, the blue, which has got silver specs, and then you've got the gold, which has got multicolor specs. And then we've got obviously this uh, limited edition purple, which has come out, uh, which will be, I, I guess will sell like hotcakes. Um, Narwhal pens, when they do a limited edition, they, they just, they go. Thanos just snaps them out of existence. <laughs> so, yes. Okay, right, well that brings it to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed uh, the rambles. If you did, do consider giving the video a like, and also please consider giving a comment. What sparkly pens do you like? What pens make you happy? Just to write with, you know, is, is it down to the material? Is it down to the nib? What makes you happy about writing with a fountain pen? Do leave that as a, a comment in the section below. If you're still listening at this point, which a lot of people don't, but anyway, I thought I'd mention it. So 
that really leaves it for today. I'm going to now go off and try and get this uh, video partly edited and I shall see you guys next week. Till then, stay safe and goodbye for now.